Do you need to create a lot of documents really quickly? Say name tags for your new employees, invoices for new orders, or even place settings for a wedding. Well, Adobe InDesign has you covered. InDesign is Adobe's layout and page design software. If you ever needed to create a brochure, resume, or business card, Adobe InDesign is a great place to start creating quality, professional documents. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use one of InDesign's more complex features to build fast and accurate documents by using a spreadsheet. This amazing feature is called Data Merge. Data Merge allows us to pull in data from a spreadsheet for fast and easy generation using one template. In this video, I'll show you how to format your spreadsheet, create a basic invoice template in InDesign, and use the data merge function to pull in data from your spreadsheet to create multiple invoices at the same time. But first, let's get the template out of the way. This allows us to know exactly what information we need to include in our spreadsheet. For this project, I'm creating a simple invoice template using Adobe InDesign's type tool. I'll drag a box and begin typing dummy information or fake information that will allow me to see how my document will look without being specific. I can modify the type styles and font to suit the design I am looking for. Additionally, I will use my shape tools to draw boxes and help separate each new product or item to give a clean invoice look. I can also include things like my company name, my company logo, and any policies or terms and conditions If you want to learn more about Adobe InDesign or layout design, check out video tutorials on linkedinlearning.com. You have access to their entire catalog of video tutorials with your Gwinnett County Public Library card. There, now that I know what my basic invoice will look like, let's take a look at what information will be dynamic or change from invoice to invoice. Things like the name of the person, their contact information, the amount due and the product they've purchased will change from invoice to invoice, while the rest will remain the same. Things like the originating company's name, location, logo, or any terms and conditions. With this information, we can begin preparing our spreadsheet to use within InDesign. Let's start by opening a blank spreadsheet. We'll start by naming each cell on the first row after the information we want to import into our document. This is because Data Merge uses the column of your spreadsheet to serve as headers for information that can be dynamically added. So if you're creating invoices, for example, the first cell in the first row might be name, and below that would be the individual names of each person who is getting an invoice. By this logic, each individual row is a new person and therefore a new invoice. So let's fill out the rest of our header row accordingly by providing columns for the dynamic information that will change through each invoice. Things like the contact information, the amount due, the product name, the quantity, prices, and so on. It's important to note that if you're missing information for a person, such as a phone number or an email, that is okay. Cells in a row can be blank, but column headers or items in the very first row should never be blank. If a cell in your column header is blank, this will cause your InDesign to throw an error. Once I have my header row, I can begin filling out the information for each individual person or each individual invoice. It's also important to note that it is possible to import images with the data merge feature. For this project, we won't really need it, but for creating a business card or a flyer, we might. So I will illustrate how to do that now by adding in a header row specifically for our images. When importing an image into a field, we have to do something special for our header row. We will prepend whatever the field name is with an at symbol. 
This will let Data Merge know that we are linking a file or directory, and it will find the file associated with the path we provide. This tells InDesign to look in that specific folder for a specific image that we will use in place of whatever photo placeholder we're using. If you get an error message, we type the at symbol. Just add an apostrophe before the at symbol to validate the function. Let's start filling out our rows. Once we have our header rows, we can begin filling out the information for each individual invoice. When we get to our photo columns, we're going to paste the file path to our image. To find the file path on a Mac, simply navigate to the image in your finder, then right click and go to Get Info. A dialog box with information about your image will pop up. From here, we can find the area that says Location and left click and drag over it to select the text. Next, press Ctrl C to copy. When you paste or hit Ctrl V into your spreadsheet, you should directly see the file path to your image. Don't forget to include the file extension. If you already have a spreadsheet, you won't need to start from scratch. Just make a copy of your current spreadsheet for safekeeping and then use that file to delete columns you don't plan on importing. When we are done with our spreadsheet, we will end up with something similar to this. Each row is a different person, different information. Now let's save our spreadsheet as a tab delimited file by going to File, Save As, and then selecting Tab Delimited from the File Type dropdown. If you are using Numbers or Google Spreadsheets, you can export your spreadsheet as a comma separated or CSV file. Now that we have our spreadsheet data, it's finally time to data merge. Inside of our InDesign template, let's navigate to Windows, Utilities, Data Merge. The Data Merge window will pop up and indicate it has no data loaded and will give you instructions on how to do that. We'll click on the hamburger menu in the upper right hand corner of this box and select Data Source. Here, we'll navigate to our tab delimited or CSV file and click open. When you do that, it'll load the data into our data merge window. You will notice the name of our heading rows and an icon indicating one of them is a photo. This is perfect. If you're having issues loading your data source, remember to make sure that your heading rows are not empty or make sure that the spreadsheet you saved is closed. Now we will need to go into our template and replace any instance of our dummy data with our real data. Let's start with our name placeholder. To do this, simply select the name, then click on the name field in the data merge panel. It will replace our dummy name with the bracketed name of your field to indicate it is a placeholder. Additionally, InDesign will tell us how many instances of this field is in our document and on which pages they reside. Great. Now, let's do that for all of our fields. For our image specifically, we'll go ahead and select an empty placeholder box then click on the photo field. If we hit preview at the bottom of the data merge panel, we can view what it will look like with the correct data in this place. If you get an error message saying your image cannot be found, double check the spreadsheet to make sure you are using the correct file path. Once our preview matches the style and data we are aiming for in our preview menu, 
Now it is time to merge our template and our spreadsheet. Select our hamburger menu again and go to Create Merge Document. Alternatively, you can select the Create Merge Document button. This will open the Merge Document window and ask us for the specifics of our document. It will ask if we want to merge all records from our spreadsheet or just a few. You can also tell it if you want multiple records on one sheet of paper, for instance, if you're doing name tags or business cards. For now, we will leave it as a single record per page and have it cycle through all the data on our spreadsheet. Once we click OK, it'll combine our template and our data into separate document pages where each page is a new invoice with different information. It will generate a message letting me know if any text is cut off on any of my document pages and where exactly to find it. We don't have any cut off text on this example. So once we verify that all the invoices are correct, we can go ahead and export this PDF and then we'll have invoices to send. And that's how you use the data merge function. In a few simple steps, we can create hundreds of business cards place settings, invoices, name tags, you name it, in just a few minutes. A few notes though about the data merge feature. If you update your original spreadsheet file, your CSV or your tab delimited file, you will need to also update the file in InDesign to see those changes. To do this, click on the hamburger menu in the data merge panel and select update data source. It'll automatically add the change data from here, we'll go ahead and create another merge document with our updated data. To find out more about how to use the data merge feature, feel free to check out the resources in the description or stop by the Learning Labs to get one-on-one -on -one assistance with a Learning Lab specialist.